given question find the resultant of the system as shown in the diagram each square has a side of 10 mm let us understand given question with the help of diagram two newton force is acting at point p five newton force is acting at point q and 1.5 newton force is acting at point r we have to find out the resultant for all these forces. We will first resolve these forces into two components. Horizontal component and vertical component. So for this two newton force I will resolve at point P. So here is the horizontal component and here is the vertical component. Now how we can decide its value? So horizontal component is nearby to angle theta 1. So we can say that it is 2 cos of theta 1. 2 cos of theta 1. And here it is 2 sin of theta 1. Now next we will resolve this force phi newton at point Q. So I will write here vertical component and here is horizontal component. So we have to show arrow also. Then this horizontal component is nearby to angle theta 2. So phi cos of theta 2. Phi cos of theta 2. And here phi sine of theta 2. Then for this 1.5 newton force we have to resolve at point R. Into horizontal component and vertical component. We have to show arrow also. Now if we observe here is the angle theta 3 with this horizontal line. Now this horizontal component and horizontal line are parallel to each other and here is the opposite angle theta 3. So we can say that it is 1.5 cos of theta 3 and here 1.5 sin of theta 3. Now important point we have to find out these angles theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3. Now this each side of this square is 10 mm and it is mentioned in the question. So from that we have to find out the angle. Now if we observe these two newton force we have to find out the corner points. So here is the first corner point P and we will say here is the second corner point. So we can join this corner point with horizontal line and vertical line along the sides of square. So here is the side of square. So we can, I will join this. These are the two corner points. We will make here points and with side of square. Here is the horizontal and here is the vertical. So here is the triangle. Now from this triangle we can say that tan of theta 1 is equal to this opposite side by nearby side. So opposite side is only one block or only one side of square and nearby side is also only one side of the square that is 10 by 10. So theta 1 is equal to 45 degree. Now we will move to find out theta 2. So again we will find out the corner point along this phi newton force. So here is the one point, point Q and here is the second point because the in middle there is no any corner point. Now we will join these corner points along the side of the square. So this is the side of the square. So I will join this. Now if we observe with the help of this black marker, here is the triangle. So tan of theta 2 is equal to this opposite side. There are three sides that is 30. And nearby side 1, 2, 3, 4 that is 40. So 30 by 40. Theta 2 is equal to 36.87. Now we will find out theta 3. So along this 1.5 newton force we will find out the corner point. So here is the first corner point and here is the second corner point. So I will join the sides. These two corner points. So here is this is the triangle. So tan of theta 3 opposite side only one side that is 10 divided by these two blocks are covered that is 10 divided by 20. So theta 3 is equal to 26.56 degree. Now we have to find out the resultant for all these three forces. So for that we have to first find out vertical component of the resultant. We can say Ry. And horizontal component of the resultant. We can say Rx. 
and from this Rx and Ry we can find out the value of R. So how to find out resultant Rx? So Rx is equal to summation of Fx. That is the summation of all horizontal component of these forces. And Ry is equal to summation of Fy. That is summation of addition of all vertical component of these forces. So we will from with reference to this diagram we will find out Rx and Ry. So summation of Fx is equal to. Now if we observe here first horizontal component 2 cos theta 1. Direction is towards right hand side. So for this we will consider positive sign then for this side we have to take negative sign. So plus 2 cos of theta 1. Theta 1 is 45. 2 cos of 45 and here is plus sign. The next one is this force. Here direction is towards right hand side. So plus 5 cos of 36.87. And now for next direction is towards left hand side. So negative sign minus 1.5 cos of 26.56. When we solve this we will get 4.072 Newton. Now we will go next to calculate R1. Now again for the upward direction we will use positive sign and for downward direction we will use negative sign. So plus 2 sign 45. Then next one here downward direction minus 5 sign 36.87. And here is also if we observe downward direction 1.5 sign 26.87. When we solve this, we will get negative answer minus 2.25 Newton. Now, here is the important point. So, what is the direction for this Rx? So, we can write here which is equal to. So, I will write with the help of red marker which is equal to 4.072 Newton. And with positive sign, direction is towards right hand side. And for this negative sign, if we observe for Ry, we have to show downward direction. So we will get 2.25 Newton, but direction is downward direction. So these two directions are important. Now we will find out magnitude R. That is under root of Rx square plus Ry square. That is under root of 4.072 square plus minus 2.25 square that is equal to 4.65 newton so this is the magnitude of r now we will find out the it's a inclination and for that with the help of these directions we will try to find out the direction of this resultant r now we will draw the resultant r with the help of horizontal component and vertical component that is Rx and Ry. We have to arrange Rx and Ry one after the other. Now if we draw this Rx direction is towards the right hand side direction. Then this is the starting point and here is the end point of Rx. Now we have to start Ry at the end point of the Rx and here direction is downward direction. So we have to mention here Ry. Now to show the resultant arc we have to attach starting point and end point of these two components. So this is the R. Now we have to find out angle of inclination of this resultant R with horizontal component we will say alpha. So how to find out alpha? So from this triangle we can say that tan of alpha is equal to Ry divided by Rx. And that is equal to 2.25 divided by 4.072 therefore alpha is equal to 29 degree. Now approximately we will draw here one line. That is the resultant R inclined at an angle of 29 degree with horizontal. So I will show here with angle of 29 degree with horizontal here is the resultant R. Now we have to find out the exact location of this R. We will consider this corner point as a point O. And now we have to find out the perpendicular distance from this point O. 
and this distance is known as d. So first I will resolve this R into two component. Here is the horizontal component and here is the vertical component. So horizontal component Rx and vertical component Ry. Now we will apply principle of moments or Varignon's theorem to find out the perpendicular distance of this R from this point O. So we will take the moment of all these forces about this point O and which is equal to moment of this resultant R about the same moment center that is point O. So when we take the moment of all forces about point O then we have to observe all these components. So we have to take the component that is the moment of all these components about point O. Now what about 2 Newton force? So here the vertical component is if we observe along this side and it is passing through the point O. So there is no any perpendicular distance because line of action of 2 sin theta 1 is passing through the point O. Now what about this horizontal component? Now this is the horizontal component and if we observe the distance of the line of action of force of this 2 cos theta 1 from the point O is 1 plus 2 plus 3 that is 30 millimeter. So we have to take 2 cos of 45 multiplied by 30. Now if I move the compass about point O in the direction of 2 cos theta 1 that is towards the right hand side then here this is the clockwise direction and for this direction we will consider positive sign. So we have to take plus 2 cos 45 into 30. Now next, next is for this 5 Newton force. So this horizontal component, if we extend this, then it is passing through the point O. So here no any perpendicular distance. So we have to consider only this 5 sin theta 2. Now if I move the compass in the downward direction, that is in the direction of 5 sin theta 2, then here also clockwise direction. So we have to use positive sign. So, what is the perpendicular distance from this point O? 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. That is 5 sides. That is 50. So, plus 5 sin 36.87 multiplied by 50. Now, we will move to the next. So, next force is this horizontal component 1.5 cos theta 3. It is passing to the point O. And 1.5 sin theta 3. It is in the downward direction. So, if I move the compass then it is also having clockwise direction. So we will take positive sign. So 1.5 sin theta 3 multiplied by perpendicular distance that is 10. So we have to take here 10. Then which is equal to? So which is equal to moment of this resultant R about point O. So we will take moment of this Ry and Rx. Now we don't know the distance. So we can consider here if I extend this Ry, then this horizontal distance is x along horizontal line. So we will say this distance will be x. And if I extend this Rx, then the vertical distance will be y. So how we can take the moment? So we can take moment about point O, that is Ry multiplied by this unknown distance x. So I will show here this distance. So that, suppose this is the line of action of force. Then distance from this point O is x. And if I extend this Rx, then here this vertical distance will be distance y. So we can say that this Ry multiplied by x. And if I move the compass, then it is the clockwise direction. So we, take, we will take Ry plus Ry multiplied by x plus Rx multiplied by this distance y. Now if we observe Rx multiplied by y and Ry plus Ry multiplied by x that is nothing but R multiplied by t. That is this resultant multiplied by the perpendicular distance of resultant from O. So this R is known because we have calculated magnitude of this resultant R. And it is 4.655 multiplied by D. So when we solve this left hand side, then we can calculate D. And it is 42.8 millimeter. Now why unit is millimeter? Because if we observe all these 
distance we have taken for calculation are in millimeter.